Hey friends, come on in, take your shoes off, have a seat, and consider staying a while by clicking that subscribe button. Today is July 9th, 2021, or as we all know it as Cyber Polygon. Now, Cyber Polygon took place this morning, 5 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, um, but where it took place, which they didn't really give the location of where it took place, um, but it was noon wherever they were at that time. I'm assuming it's somewhere over in Europe doing the time zones and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, so they didn't really say anything. and. I tried to watch as much of Cyber Polygon as I could possibly bear. Let me tell you, you better be appreciative. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, I love reporting to you guys, but let me tell you, it was brutal watching most of this. Um, I had to watch it in between trying to get work and other things done around the house. Um, so I think I have compiled enough of what went on um, to kind of give you a, like a broad sense of what happened. Obviously, though, if any of you watched it, please comment down below if I have let out anything or missed anything um, so that, you know, other people who are curious about it will know what went on. I also just want to say that I have the worst cell phone and internet service out here on the homestead. Obviously, that's what we wanted because we wanted to be unplugged, but it makes it kind of difficult to be a YouTuber. So I'm going to try to upload this as soon as I possibly can. Um, but if it's not July 9th, obviously, I had some trouble. So just wanted to say that, but I'm going to try to get it out to you today um, because I know a lot of you are curious what happened this morning. All right, so first things first, I wanted to say this because I got a lot of hate and a lot of people saying like, oh, like you're brainwashed. Oh, you stupid American. Um, it's not Russia. Um, it's the, your own country, blah, blah, blah. That might be the case. Um, I guess I'm not saying it is. I think anything's possible at this point. I wouldn't put anything past our government. However, I do find it interesting that 90% of the speakers at Cyber Polygon were Russian. Now they had an English feed and a Russian feed. So they had a Russian translator. Um, and it was very obvious that the accent they were speaking in was Russian. And uh, like I said, the only other feed they did was in Russian. So it's pretty obvious that the company that put on Cyber Polygon was from Russia. Am I saying they're behind all the cyber attacks? No, I think a lot of subscribers got that mixed up of me saying, oh, all these cyber attacks are because of Russia. That's not what I was saying. <laughs> so I just wanted to make it clear that this simulation that happened today, July 9th, Cyber Polygon, was put on by Russia. And all of these speakers, or I shouldn't say all of them because some of them were American, um, but most of the speakers, I would say 99% or 90% of them were Russian. And the only other, like I said, language that they put it out in was Russian. So take that information with what you will. <laughs> Uh, I'll just leave that there. So as I mentioned, this started at 5 a.m. Um, it would be noon over in Europe if I am speculating correctly where this is from. And um, honestly, most most of these topics were so boring. I didn't listen to like most of them. I did write down what the topic was and who was, well, some of them I wrote down who was speaking. I honestly got, like I said, so bored <laughs> watching this um, that I missed some of the speakers. Um, they each spoke for half an hour and most of it was like not even them putting out good information most of it was like them bragging about their own companies and why they're so great and the weird thing was is like everyone else there was like nodding their head and like you could tell they were like oh yeah like we're patting ourselves on the back like we're such great organizations I don't know I just thought it was weird but I will go over the agenda really quick so it started out with Herman Graf the CEO of Spare which is a Russian bank then it went to Prime Minister of Russia, Federation of Human Rights, and he made like the opening remarks. Then it was Klaus Schwab, who is the leader of the World Economic Forum. Then they went into the actual topics. So the first one was ecosystems is the new way of global in or in integration, um, which is also by Human Graph and another guy from Russia. I didn't get his name. Um, but they were basically talking about the global ecosystem, which I made a video, I want to say it was over po Cyber Polygon and how I thought it was really weird how um, they used the word like ecosystem. Um, 
but I want to say that after watching this, I think they're trying to tie it into like, oh, like this big digital reset we're trying to do is going to save the world and we're going to save, you know, the environment and all this other stuff. So I think they had to use the word ecosystem to make that fit into this whole agenda. Um, the next topic was the digital state of tomorrow, which I found it interesting that the leaders of CNN, Microsoft, and then the head of Russian security all spoke on this. And it was about the digital state citizen. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> I don't know about you. I don't want to be called a digital, digital state citizen. And it just kind of shows, again, the agenda that we're going to of being online, um, of us not really having our own currency, all this other stuff. So it, I don't know. I just don't like being called that. Um, number six was the new world or new world, new currency. Um, and the head of the Russian bank, along with the, with Matthew Bl blank, black, I can't read my handwriting, led that. And they basically were talking about digital currency, how we all need to go to one digital currency because our economy is really bad and it would improve everyone's lives in the entire world, blah, 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 blah. The next one was direct contact with the ISS. I honestly didn't listen to this. Like, I'm just going to be honest because I just saw like space guys. I don't know. Like I said, someone comment down below. If you did listen to this, I did not listen to them. The next one was combating ransomware. And I didn't take any notes on that either. The next one was resilience supply chain. Um, so this was them going into talking about the exercise that they were going to be doing that day, which was attacking a supply chain, seeing how vulnerable it was, seeing how to protect that, all that good stuff. The next one was the role of the Interpol and cybercrime, which in all my research, I don't really feel like cy or, uh, the Interpol like affects the United States. I could be wrong. Again, comment down below if you know more on that than me. This video is already going to be really long, so I'm sorry I didn't do more research into that. Um, but I just thought that was interesting that they added that in there. The next one was the role of the Red Cross, which I think was like the most interesting topic they had to me and like kind of perked my ears and I actually listened into this. And they're basically talking about like how the Red Cross um, plays a huge role in this new ecosystem online and blah, blah, blah. And I was just like sitting there like staring like with my mouth open, like dumbfounded because I'm like, okay. As far as I know, the Red Cross goes for disaster relief. So if something happens, they show up, they give like free medical care, free clothes, free water, free food. It's, uh, they've set up tents for people who don't have houses, stuff like that. So I was kind of really confused. And honestly, even watching it, still didn't understand like how they're integrating the two. But I just thought it was interesting that the Red Cross is being thrown into this mix. The next topic was international regulation on the web which I think is complete BS, if you want to ask me, because like if we take something like North Korea, who censors everything, like literally they can die if they listen to a song that is not approved or something like that. Um, and we take the United States where we're the freest country in the world and we don't like, really have, we have censorship or we started to have censorship, I should say this last few years, but it's nothing like North Korea or China. So the fact that they're trying to make like an international um, like, web basically I don't think would ever ever work um the last topic was cyber bullying and how to protect children with cyber bullying um <laughs> I I agree that this is a thing because um I know a lot of people could say oh this is like a parent's job to do however there's kids who don't have parents that pay attention there's kids in foster care who have access to the internet. There's, you know, there's laptops in schools and notebooks in school or notepads in schools. So like, I understand why they would want to do this. However, when they were talking about this, um, they were talking about restricting children's speech online um, and basically saying that children should not be allowed to share their thoughts online, um, which I think is kind of like borderline taking away you know, our constitutional rights, because we do have the right to free speech. Um, children have the right to free speech, regardless of age, or at least that's how we have always addressed that. So it's the fact that they're trying to silence young, impressionable voices online. And I think that's, you know, obviously, they are trying to brainwash kids right now with all this propaganda going on and stuff. So I just thought it was really interesting that this group think is the direction that they want to go. Shouldn't be shocked about it. Um, but obviously, if you get young kids used to not being able to say their opinion online or being afraid to share their opinion online, that's going to transfer into adulthood. And I think eventually 
they're going to say, okay, now all adults, since you're used to it, or since you're not been able to say what you think online, now as an adult, you can't do it. All right, so all that being said, all the boring stuff out of the way, let's get into the actual simulation that most of us were worried about. And so what this is designed to do, if you missed my first cyber, cyber polygon video, was to teach organizations on how to combat if they are cyber attacked. Now, again, like I said in my first video, you had to actually apply to this. They wouldn't just let any company in. Um, and a lot of these companies were bigger. I'm not going to go over it. There was a list of 200 companies that were a part of this, so it would take me forever. Um, but I'll just give you the rundown of it. So this drill, there was a red team and there was a blue team. The red team was the hackers or the Russian um like programming again i'm not saying russia has been doing the cyber attacks i'm saying this was russia's programming they used to be able to put on the cyber polygon so they they were the red teams or the hackers and the blue team was all of these these consisted of these 200 corporate teams so they were like the head of all these corporations and businesses see this part was really boring if you're someone like me that doesn't understand like gaming or digital stuff or doesn't really understand what's going on i'm sure some of you are like into that and would find it interesting to see like what they were doing to try to combat this cyber attack um but basically it was just a bunch of these teams sitting down and then they had their company whatever pulled up and then this russian um simulation came in and was like trying to attack them and they were going back and forth it honestly looked like a bunch of geeks playing video games to me no offense to anyone my husband plays video games <laughs> but that's what it looks like to me like i said i wasn't really into it but there was two things that happened um that i found really really interesting <laughs> one halfway through the simulation the simulation actually got attacked from an outside source so it wasn't the um like programming that was supposed to be attacking they literally had some outside source what did they call it a denial of, of service attack so basically someone not involved in the world economic forum not involved in cyber polygon tapped into cyber polygon and was basically trying to shut the program down and shut them down from being able to do this now i found this so interesting because these 200 companies and this uh cyber simulation is supposed to be the best of the best in the world so these are supposed to be the top guys these are supposed to be the guys that other companies smaller guys that weren't invited to this are supposed to look up to and ask for advice and i'm pretty sure they would probably sell this eventually like some type of software like hey this is how you stop this is the best of the best of a or how to stop a cyber attack these are supposed to be the best of the best on this planet and they got hacked and it took them i think around i want to say 10 or 15 minutes i don't remember i didn't count the feed to figure out what was actually happening and to get back online and to continue so it just kind of shows you how vulnerable like the online web it doesn't matter who you are how good you are how much these people think they're in control it just shows you how not only vulnerable like being online and stuff is but how vulnerable like our supply chain is how vulnerable like we run everything on a digital scale right so it just goes to show you like how much we aren't safe and how the system we have set up as far as banking how we get our food our water how we live is so it could just be crushed with like like that the second thing that happened was the english feed so i let you guys know at the beginning of this video that there was a russian translator so half of this was being um, broadcasted in russian and half of it was being broadcast casted by a russian um, interpreter in english well about five to seven minutes of the feed got interrupted so you could see them you know gaming you could see them going back and forth you could see them talking but the only thing that was coming through was russian so i have no idea what was being said i have no idea what was being planned but again I don't know if this like I don't, I don't know this plan maybe this was something like some code they were sending out maybe they were telling someone something and they were being sly i don't know so it could be that but again this is supposed to be the world's best of the best and it's not like this is being broadcasted outside of a building like this was being broadcasted in one building and they couldn't even keep a feed up you know what i mean like it just that just blew my mind that that happened out of the 200 teams that participated only six succeeded in stopping or preventing this attack on their system. Six out of 200 of these teams that are supposed to be the elite of the elite. They, they had to apply. They got in. Um, the World Economic Forum thought these are the best companies. 
only six of them were able to complete this cyber polygon um, simulation. And at the very end of this, they said that they are not going to be releasing the results of this simulation to the public until November of 2021. Now, it's, it's interesting because obviously this was live, right? Like, we could see a lot of what was going on. And, like, we obviously I've given you a ton of information of what happened this morning. Um, so, it's just, why why wait till November? And I had a lot of you kind of criticize my prediction. I'm not, like, I'm not ever, I will never be one of those preppers that are saying, like, I know exactly what's going to happen. I'm going to bet my family and my house on it. No, like, I was just predicting from the past simulation that they did with the pandemic and it happening six months later, I said, this cyber attack's happening somehow. I'm suspicioning in the next six months, something big is going to happen. So I just find it interesting that they're not going to release these results until November, which is pretty close to six months after this um, cyber simulation happening. All right, that was such a long video. Um, I hope this was helpful and kind of gave you guys a better understanding of what happened today. Um, like I said, I can't hear everything and I didn't really pay attention to everything. So if you watched it or you've heard other things, please comment them down in the section down below. I always say this every video, but the best thing that we can do as preppers is to pass along information. We are going to work as a team and that is the best way that we can survive in an SHDS situation is helping each other out. So if you have other information, make sure you leave a comment in the section down below or if you just want to give your opinion on all the weirdness that happened and the weirdness of this event all together um i would love to hear your thoughts down below make sure to give this video a big thumbs up it's free it only takes a second and it really helps this channel out and i will catch you all in the next one bye